if any state waives the requirement that insurers cover pre-existing conditions, then employers in other states who don't even do business in that state can buy insurance in that waiver state for their employees and they can race down to the bottom. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of coverage for pre-existing conditions. Don't let anybody tell you that's not in this case. And, it would, and, and if you look at what they're going to do, they're going to take $880 billion out of the Medicaid program. So anybody who's got a kid on the autism spectrum, anybody who's caring for an elderly parent, anybody who is worried about you know, their child who's, uh, who's, who's, uh, who's, who's got a disability, uh, this is where the rubber meets the road. Hi, I'm Trisha Bone from New Falls, New York, and I have a pre-existing condition, which makes me really emotional talking about it, but... I have. Uh, you don't yell. Let's talk right in. Take it. Okay. Can you hear? You can hear it. Go ahead. Hello. <laughs> um, I have employee-sponsored health insurance uh, that I've been paying into for years and years. What can I expect out of this new bill? Yeah. Well, for one thing, your employer won't be required to to give health insurance. They take that that requirement away. Employees employers will no longer have to cover their employees. Um, you can expect that employers can weaken your coverage. Uh, if they have a waiver state where they can find coverage policies that they can uh, give to you. Uh, now listen, not all employers are out to get you, you know. I mean, a lot of employers do the right thing by their employees, and they should be celebrated. But the, but the truth is, we've lived in the world where people were brutalized by a system that was just the private market. We've seen it. We've seen people with medical bankruptcy. We've seen people drop from coverage, lifetime limits, and annual caps. All that stuff comes back. And we know that because the, the Congressional Budget Office told us on the old bill, we don't have a CBO score on the new one, don't get me started. But on the old bill, which is you know, gonna be about the same, uh, we think, we know that, that we are gonna go back up in terms of the number of uninsured people in this country. We are at an all-time low, do you know that? Thanks, Obama. Yeah. I don't mind that at all. I represent a district that voted for Donald Trump. Out of 200 Democrats in the House, there are 12, 12 of us who represent districts that voted for Donald Trump. So you think I'm just here as some, you know, progressive standing up, whipping up the crowd. I represent a Donald Trump district. My district is 60% rural, it is 25% military families. It's a conservative place.